upgrades and safety tips. I made this to, for additional place to hook some blocks and tie downs. Not an inch and a half wide by eighth inch thick aluminum. It actually pulls against this plate. I made this hinge so I had a means of laying the mask down. Use a longer piece. I made a gin pull uh, two one inch pieces of tubing. It worked for me. And uh, pulley on the front pulpit runs down to a remote controlled winch on the trailer. Works works out real well. You still need to have the bridle so the mask don't swing while you're picking it up, especially you want to be on a level location as possible when you're standing the mast up. Also for the whisker pole, I uh, made these. They pull, they cock at an angle and the rope won't slide through them. They fit really snug. I think they'll wear down some. Uh, but that seems to work real good. You want to use the whisker pole on the Jenny when you're uh, almost downwind. You can't keep it filled. It works a little better. Also, the yellow lines are safety lines. That material certified to 4,000 pound tinsel. It's a climbing and rescuing strap. And I made a six foot one for in the cockpit. Hooks to my harness. The lines for going up to the front are three foot long. It seems to work out pretty darn good. Uh, also, I've got an inflatable PFD, so if I go in to drink, uh, I should be tethered to the boat and uh, he'll keep my head above water, I hope. The safety harness, I uh, duplicated one and made this out of seat belt material. In my opinion, it's strong. And uh, for what I found online for a hundred bucks, I didn't think it was really a, a good buy. Auto tiller. Chrysler Traveler's right here. And uh, I wanted to get the auto tiller out of the way, so I ran the, I believe it's 18 inch from the pivot point back. Because you're on the back side, I mounted the auto tiller on the opposite side. Normally it's mounted on that side. And uh, yeah, we enter the reciprocal. So if you want to go at 180 degrees, you would set it at zero. It's about three degrees off because the stationary end is forward. But that's worked very good for me. <coughs> My shelf was afterthought. It is handy. It's in the way. I wish I had electric start on the motors. That would that would be the final touch. Because if you got a monkey with the motor, you got to lean over the back, and it's just clumsy. The four holes are for the grill. I made a heat sink that goes on the bottom of the grill so it doesn't heat up the plywood, and uh, it works pretty good. I offset it because the ladder's on that side. And with the top railing, it's clumsy getting in. I don't have a lot of headroom, but in a pinch, I could do it. Also, my fuel tanks are up in the front of the boat. I've got four six-gallon tanks and ran the line back. 
The line is inside this PVC pipe. The reason is, is with the sun shining on that black line, the residence time of the fuel coming through the line is so slow it'll vaporize before it gets to your engines. Uh, the first summer we tried this, the motors quit. And then I realized because the fuel lines were getting hot, so we ran a hose with water running along the fuel lines. Uh, when we got close to port, we wanted to make sure the motors wouldn't quit. That worked out pretty good. So, in, enclosed in the PVC pipe, I haven't had any problems this summer. I did put a shutoff switch, shutoff valve. The reason is, is with the carburetor engine, carbureted engines, the vibration when you're hauling the boat, the floats will bounce and she will flood them engines like you wouldn't believe. You got to pull the spark plugs out and, and uh, stuff to get them uh, get dried out enough to get them started again. So I always shut the fuel off when I turn the motors off and when I'm hauling them. So that's Oak Island. And that is Hermit Island, and we're going to make a turn and go around Oak Island. So we're going to use the 10 degrees to the right, to the right, right side is to the right, to the left is to the left. So 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees. Real nice, real nice. I planned on going to Manitou Island, but that's the dock there. She's pretty rough today. I'll be out here again a couple weeks, in a couple weeks again, and uh, we'll make an attempt there. I uh, stay clipped in whenever I'm out of the cabin. Good safety precaution. Uh, I was when the water gets rough, pretty easy to lose your balance. Chrysler does not have any good grips on it, really. You can grab on here if it's up, if the pop up is up. And I've thought about making a handle run along here, come off here with straps steel straps and a piece of steel tubing and that would give me a handle to hang on to but when you get ahead of the pop-up you still don't have any place to really hang on to and uh, this morning downwind grabbing that jenny in the wind and the rough sea it was, that was not good I'd like to do something to improve that and I ended up pulled the hatch up and tucked the tail of the Jenny inside to keep it from blowing around. in the troughs and peaks and it's probably going to get real rough then but I need to make more of a turn and the wind is at 14 miles an hour again oh, what do we do here to the right 10 20 30 degrees to the right pull the sail in a little bit. <laughs> Making a lot of noise, not getting a lot of speed. It's just under about three miles an hour. 229 feet of water, 64 degrees water temp on the surface. And that is Stockton Island. And I believe
believe I read that there is more bear per square mile on that island than any place in North America. <laughs> There's some hiking trails, but I stay off them. I'm like, no, that's okay. <clears throat> lived in the woods. <laughs> I grew up living in the woods. I don't, bear don't fancy me that much. Especially if people feed them. Worst thing anybody can do. Start feeding the bear and they get tame and then they come up and uh, I know some states they will live trap the bear and move them and they tag them, put a tag in their ear. And three tags they have to destroy the animal for safety purposes. So the bear are nice natural habitat, but don't feed them. Keep your coolers put away, and don't keep your food in the tent or the camper. Put it in the trunk. And the background there, that's Madeline Island. That's about 18 miles long. That's a big island. And we're just getting to the tip of that. You can see between Stockton and Madeline, you can see a little gap there in the sea. And if we go straight through there to the end of Madeline Island and make a turn, and it's 22 miles back to Saxon Harbor. So we're going to go down past Hermit and the west side of Basswood Island. It's a dock there. The channel's two miles wide, and it's a shallow dock. It's only about three feet. Chrysler has a 900-pound cast iron swing keel on a winch, and I can crank that up, and I can tip my rudder up, and I have a two-foot draft. So I have the ability to get into those shallow places, which is nice. The Coast Guard or the Corps of Engineers is not cleaning out the, the entryways to the safe harbors even as much as they used to. It's not in the budget. So uh, it gives this boat does give me some advantages over the larger boats. The boat itself weighs 3,000 pounds. So she is, does make a nice, a nice boat. I had hung up on a sandbar. A uh, large boat came through, and the waves pushed me up on the shallow. And I waited till I seen another boat coming. And when the waves came in, I was able to push it off the sandbar myself last summer. So yeah, I'm going to do that with a much heavier boat. We got some cumulus clouds over there. That's okay. We'll be over to our dock in a couple hours, and uh, we'll tire up there for the night. Build a campfire. Nice, peaceful spot. I've hiked around that island some. It's a beautiful, beautiful little place to tie up. Real peaceful. And so there we are. Till next